Butterscotch Shenanigans. Hey everybody, my name is Seth Coster and I'm with Butterscotch Shenanigans and I'm the games programmer for our studio. Uh, I'm also the guy who programmed the games that you will find in our source code in the Yo-Yo Games bundle. And so I thought it'd be kind of cool if I put together a little video to kind of walk you through some of the uh, sort of structure that we use to put together our games to help you navigate your way through the source code. Uh, so what I have up on screen right now is Flop Rocket, which is one of our uh, Android and iOS games. And uh, it's been out for a couple years. It was out as a, as a free game and uh, it ended up getting featured on iTunes and it did quite well for itself. So you can kind of dig into the, into the guts of, of a, uh, a successful game and kind of see what makes it tick, which is pretty cool. Uh, so in Flop Rocket, you, you play as a rocket and you're just trying to navigate your way through a cave. Every time you play, a mission appears and is handed to the player and that allows the player to kind of get some extra uh, juice that they can use to power up their rocket and, and do better on the next run. Uh, on the left side of the screen, we have this little slider that normally you would use with your thumb and uh, that flips the rocket around and you can see the rocket kind of bouncing around on the, on the uh, launch pad there. And you can either click on the right side of the screen, which would be your right thumb on mobile, or you can use space bar uh, to, to apply thrust to the rocket. And uh, you can also use A and D to turn. So we basically have a combination of PC controls as well as uh, mobile controls that are both simultaneously available uh, on this version of the game uh, for testing. So, uh, so I'm just going to fly through the cave a little bit. So I'm just clicking on the right side of the screen using A and D. And you can see we have coins that you can pick up. Um, and if you bang into stuff, then you take some damage. So you can see at the top we have an armor bar. And once your armor gets down to zero, then your rocket will explode. Uh, you can also see we have uh, physics in this game. So this is taking advantage of the Game Maker uh, Box 2D physics integration. And so I'll talk a little bit about kind of where that stuff is as well. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's take a look at let's take a look at the guts of the game. And also we have a Freeway Mutant Extreme Burger Defense and Shep Hard in here. Um, these games all pretty much follow the same kinds of structure principles. And so whatever applies to Flop Rocket will generally apply to the rest of these games as well. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the structure of the Game Maker project. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about the sprites. You can kind of just look at those and see for yourself. Um, we do have quite a few scripts. And they're organized by folders that should be pretty understandable. You know, we have the upgrades section, which uh, which allows you to, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there to retrieve information about like how much acceleration you have based on how much you've invested in your rocket um, to actually purchase upgrades and all that stuff. So anything about the upgrade system you can find in there. And you can also, we have a, an init upgrade script, which you can look at to kind of see how we set up the data behind the scenes to, to track everything about your upgrades and then to display uh, the descriptions of those upgrades on the screen and all that stuff. Um, so here's all the initialization. So we have our gun, escape pod upgrades, black hole, afterburners, so all these, all these cool things. Um, okay, uh, we also have, so we have camera functions, saving and loading, pretty obvious. Um, and we have a pretty fun uh, play music script that we use, which uh, I would definitely recommend looking into. We realized that we had kind of a problem with our our music in the game, which was we only ever wanted to play one song at a time. We didn't want to have to manually stop the music every time we started the next track. And so we put together this uh, this little script that takes a takes a look at what is currently being played, and we, we can just tell it to play a song. And then it will decide whether or not uh, whether or not it needs to stop the existing song and start a new one or whatever. Um, so that's a pretty handy handy thing there. Um, we also have this fun play sound varied script where uh, we can we basically randomly pitch the the a sound between eighty percent and one hundred twenty percent of its starting pitch, um, so that we can reuse the same sounds and get a lot more variety out of them. Um, we have this cool flash shader 
we put together, which you can see under the shaders here, called Shad Flash, and then we have some scripts to manage that. Um, so if you want to know more about that, just do a Control Shift F and type Flash, and you'll find all the different uses of that. But that's the effect that we have in, in most of our games, where when something takes damage or gets hit by something, it flashes white for a moment. And that is an effect that's as old as time. You can see that back in games like Contra and stuff like that. Um, so if that's the kind of thing that you want to apply to one of your games, then you can see how how we've done it in, in our games. Uh, one of my favorite things about Flop Rocket is the dynamic mission system that we put together, which you can dig into in the missions folder. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, but basically uh, this is a set of, of scripts that tracks the player's progress and records all their bests and stuff, and then it will go ahead and generate missions based on what the player's previous accomplishments were, um, which we found is actually a pretty fun way to kind of uh, throw new and fun things to the player uh, because, you know, throughout the throughout the game, they're just maneuvering a rocket through a cave. And yes, we do have new obstacles as they get deeper. But we found that that adding these missions on top throws some really nice sort of variety and, and spice uh, into there. Um, OK, and then one final thing with the scripts is we have this uh, resolution set function, which is something that we use in all of our games. Um, and it's something that's really important, I think, to to understand. So I definitely recommend digging into this. If you're going to make games for Android, iOS, uh, PC, whatever, you simply can't count on anybody having the same resolution or aspect ratio or whatever as anybody else. And so you need to make your game really dynamic and flexible so that it can expand and contract and shrink and grow and whatever um, to fit any device uh, that is out there. And so what we've done in our resolution script for Flop Rocket is we have a fixed view width, so the game is 1,024 pixels wide, and then we dynamically uh, scale the view height. So we don't we don't stretch the game, we just reveal more of the cave above and below. So if you're on an iPad, which is a more of a square shape, then you just see more vertically, but the game stays the same width. And this is important because if you could see more of the game, then that just makes the game easier because you can avoid obstacles more easily. Um, so if you want to kind of know how we how we uh, manage this crazy dynamic resolution stuff, uh, definitely check out the resolution set script. And we do happen to have some comments in there to kind of walk through how that works. Um, so that's all I want to say about scripts. Um, I'm going to move on to rooms, the rooms of this project. So rooms in Game Maker, they're basically like it's the place where where things happen. And uh, what you'll usually see in a lot of games is people use the room editor to hand build lots of content. And we don't do that uh, in our games. We, we like to make the game build its own content. So we use a lot of procedural generation. So if you open up the gameplay room, which is called RM underscore gameplay, you'll see that there's just nothing in there. Um, it's just a big black void. And there's a single object in here. And if you click on it, you'll see it is O underscore controller. Um, so that's where the magic happens. And the same thing if we open up the upgrades room, it's a big black void with a single object called O underscore upgrades. And uh, these are sort of controller objects that make all the decisions about what to spawn, how to build the room, and all that stuff. Uh, so if you're interested in procedural generation, in you know just kind of like how to dynamically construct UIs and rooms and all that stuff, um, definitely, I would definitely start with those things. So we have the controller object, for example. Let's pop that open. And the create event of the controller object, we can see it resets a bunch of uh, statistics. It will uh, check your milestones so it can decide what to set your goals at. It'll generate a new mission for the player. Uh, so it does all this, all this sort of cool prep work to get ready for your for your next run. Um, then it starts spawning a bunch of instances. So it'll create the mission display. It'll create uh, a, the slider on the side of the screen. It'll even make an object that draws the shadow for the player. Um, lots and lots of stuff. So we just we just kind of use this object to create everything, put everything out in the world, and then the game is ready to go. Uh, so don't be alarmed if you open up the rooms and find nothing in there. It's not broken. Uh, it's all just being done in code with the controller object. Um, 
And we also, I want to point out that this is a physics game. And so you may find, so uh, like if we open up this O underscore little guy, which is the little guy that pops out of the spaceship when your ship explodes. And this guy has the physics object checked or physics uh, checkbox checked. So he's using physics. And if we click modify collision shape, you can kind of see, you know, if we zoom in. So there's how his physics mask works. He's a circle and it's centered right at like around his chest area. Uh, but you may notice something interesting, which is if you're looking at the player object, the player object does not have the physics box checked. Um, this is not a bug and it may throw you off. And so this is why I wanted to kind of jump into it. Uh, in the create event of the player, if you scroll down to the bottom, you will find that in fact the player uh, is using physics. It creates a physics fixture at, right here, and then nothing happens. So what's happening with this fixture? Um, if we do a control shift F, which is sort of a search in scripts to find references to things, and we put fixture in there, um, we'll do whole word only, case sense of search, ignore comments. So we only want to get this variable that the, that the player is using. Hit OK. And what we'll find is that we have this spawn player object script that when it gets created, it will, uh, depending on whether the player is an escape pod or a ship, it will dynamically create a differently sized and shaped uh, box so that when the player is banging into things that their that their collision box actually accurately represents uh, the shape of the player object. Um, so don't be alarmed that the player doesn't have the physics box checked. The player's physics properties are being created elsewhere in the spawn player object uh, script. Um, so I think those are kind of the, the big points I wanted to hit. Um, but honestly, my recommendation would be just play around, start seeing what you can break. Uh, there's all kinds of crazy stuff in this game. We have, you know, we have the upgrade screen. We have sort of this dynamic moving main menu. Um, we have little cut scenes that you can, that you can get into. Um, so we have, and we also have a lot of cool dynamic UI elements that make pretty clever use of just simple functions like draw line and draw circle and stuff like that to save on texture space. Uh, so really just just the sky's the limit, just dig around and just kind of start breaking stuff because you can always just, you know, revert back or re-download the, the source code and, and start over. So I uh, hope you guys have a good time. And uh, if you have any questions, or just kind of want to talk shop, you can come on over to uh, our Discord server, which is at bit.ly slash BS Discord. And we're usually uh, just kind of lurking in there. So uh, we hope to see you there and enjoy the code.